Hi everyone and welcome back. Um, please call us on 08600 628 so we can answer your last minute questions for tomorrow's paper. Right, um, I've often been asked what section do you start off with on paper two, whether you begin with geometry or analytical or trigonometry. And um, I just want to give you the breakdown of, of the three topics. Trigonometry is 40% of the paper, roughly, give or take, and analytical and geometry are both 30%. So my suggestion is that tomorrow you all start with the trigonometry section simply because you're going to score a lot more marks on. I find that if you start with the geometry and you get really excited about the riders and take a long time, then you battle to finish the trigonometry. So for tomorrow, a tip is to start with the trig, then do the analytical and finally leave yourself some time for the geometry. Right, um, my next topic is a trig expression. We're going to simplify the trig expression, which was found in an exam paper a few years back. Right, the expression is to simplify uh, cos of 105 times the cos of 15, and we're dividing it by the cos of 45 minus x times cos x minus the sine of 45 minus x times sine of x. This is one of those old favorites of mine because I did get to mark this question, and I found that a number of students began to expand the denominator. And if we look at the denominator, the temptation is to say, well, I know what to do with cos of 45 minus x. That's just cos of 45 times the cos of x plus the sine of 45 times the sine of x. So we land up expanding and multiplying by the cos of x. And then we've also got to expand the sine of 45 minus x multiplied by the sine of x. And we're getting this enormous denominator. And the real beauty about higher grade is that you don't just jump into the question. You actually have to analyze what is actually going on before actually jumping into it. Because you might get stranded doing pages of pages of work, which is for very few marks. Now this question carried six marks. So if we expand this and keep multiplying the denominator, we're landing up with a lot of work with for very, very little um, marks. So Go back and analyze. What else can I do to the denominator? If I have a look at it, could I possibly reduce to one term? Or could I do anything else that is going to be a little bit easier than just the expansion? And again, a tip is don't get into the math jungle. Try and get out of the math jungle by opting for something else. So looking at that denominator, I have the cos of an angle times the cos of another angle minus the sine of an angle times the sine of a different angle. Could I possibly reduce that to something more simpler? And yes, if we recognize this 45 minus x is just an angle, I really have the cos of an angle times the cos of another angle minus the sine of the angle times the sine of another angle. And we can all recognize this as the expansion for cos of a plus b. So we can actually reduce that denominator to a very simple cos of the sum of two angles. So let's do that uh, and see where we get to. We have a numerator, which can also be simplified. That's basically the cos of 75 multiplied by the cos of 15. And we're dividing now by the sum of 45 minus x as the one angle plus x as the second angle. And voila, we have negative x plus x, which is just zero. So we get down to cos 45 in no time at all. And that's how you want your trig expressions to work. They must simplify or reduce to something very simple very quickly. Then you know you're getting some marks. Okay. Now we have negative cos 75 and, ne and cos of 15. The product of two uh, cos functions does not yield anything. So we would like to take the cos 75 and change it into um, maybe its cofunction and see if we get something out of that. Its cofunction 
is the sine of 15. So we've got sine of 15 times cos of 15 divided by the cos of 45. Now I omitted to say at the beginning that this question had a, an instruction, do not use your calculator with it. So we're going to uh, stick to that. Um, and now we've got this product here of sine 15 times cos 15. What is the product of sine and cos as one trig ratio? Anyone know? Okay, if I give you the sine of twice x, that is simply twice of sine x times cos x. So the product of sine and cos can be written as one ratio of double the angle. And this product has got a coefficient of 2. So if we're missing this 2, it must mean that I've divided by 2, so I'm going to divide by 2 on the side as well. Okay, so we have sine of 2x over 2 is actually the same thing as sine x cos x. So that's a good one to remember, that the product of sine and cos is actually just the sine of twice the given angle, which in this case is 15, so it's twice 15, which would be 30, but there's a missing coefficient, so it's actually sine 30 divided by 2. So that's the product of sine and cos. It can be written as one trig ratio. Okay, right, let's go back to uh, our question. And we're just going to go down. We landed up with the product of sine and cos, which we've now established as negative sine 30 divided by cos 45. Okay, without a calculator, that's pretty simple. We need the special ratios for sine 30 and cos 45. Sine 30 being a half and um, cos 45 being 1 over root 2. So, and I am forgetting to divide by 2, so let me just correct this. This is sine 30 uh, divided by 2. And then I've got this division by cos 45. So I'm dividing by 1 over root 2, which is my cos 45. And so I get negative a half divided by 2 is just times a half times root 2 over 1. And we get root 2 over 4 with the negative there. Okay, so just two things I wanted to illustrate tonight, that is the product of sine and cos is, can be written as one ratio, the sine of double the angle, and um, also to not spend a lot of time going through a whole lot of steps, but to try and reduce things by analysing before you start. All the best. We'll be back in a little while. Keep this frequency clear. Keep this frequency clear.